guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Betsy, and today I want to talk about Ficus lirata, also known as fiddle leaf fig. Ficus lirata gets its name from the lyre instrument, which nobody has played since like 425 BC. So if you don't know what that is, totally justified. If you've seen some old Greek paintings or some old Greek mosaics, you may have seen like a wistful looking woman playing something that's kind of like a harp and it's shaped like these leaves, I guess. I personally feel like fiddle leaf fig is a little more accurate because they look more like fiddles than lyres to me. Fiddle leaf figs don't really like to be fiddled with that much. They prefer to be left alone. But if you ask them their favorite song, it would undoubtedly be The Devil Goes Down to Georgia by Charlie Daniels Band. A lot of people say that it's a difficult plant to care for, but I care to disagree. I think that it's very easy to care for because it just wants to be left alone. If you meet its basic care requirements, it doesn't require a lot of hands-on fondling or anything like that. It's not until it becomes very mature that you want to start worrying about notching or pruning or all that jazz. And you really just have to pay attention to the watering regimen. So I think it makes a perfectly fine beginner plant. They naturally grow in the lowland rainforests of West Africa. So they have care requirements that a typical rainforest plant would have. And they actually start as epiphytes in their natural environment. They grow in the top of another type of tree, and then they slowly put down roots and strangle the tree to death. So you basically have a murderer in your home. When it comes to light requirements, they always prefer bright, indirect light. You should never leave them in direct sun for too long. Sometimes mine gets a little bit of morning sun, but in the morning the sun isn't super hot, it doesn't scorch the leaves. I would never leave it in a west or south facing window with the sun shining down on it for hours. Mine is actually doing really well in kind of a dark corner of my apartment. I mean it's not, you know, blackout dark, but it gets a pretty low amount of light and it's still surviving, but it's definitely not thriving. They're always going to do better in bright, indirect light but they will survive lower light levels. Their preferred temperature range is like 65 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit, which is I think 18 to 27 degrees Celsius. They like it on the warm side since they're from a nice warm rainforest atmosphere. You don't want to put them in a place where they're exposed to cold drafts. That can really make them suffer, especially if you live in a climate that has winter conditions and it gets really cold. Don't leave your plant near a window or near a door where it's exposed to colder temperatures, even temporarily. They like the temperature around them to be maintained and they don't like fluctuation in temperature. Since they come from a rainforest-like atmosphere, they're always going to prefer higher humidity. Normal household humidity is usually okay, but if you can provide them with 50 to 65% humidity, that will definitely avoid the, the edges of the leaves turning crispy and brown and drying out. In my opinion, this plant can do well in north, south, east, or west facing rooms. If you have it near a west or south facing window, just make sure that the sun isn't beating down on its leaves for hours during the afternoon when it's really hot. And if you have it in a north facing window, just be sure to keep it nice and close to the window where it gets plenty of light. Because although it can survive in low light, it will never thrive and it might be a really slow grower in that case. I think the toughest thing about this plant is developing a good watering regimen. The soil should be nice and fluffy. As for mine, instead of using peat moss, I actually used coconut coir because it retains water and it also has a nice like airy fluffy consistency to it. And then I have some bits of um, like bark made for orchids, uh, like orchid potting mix. And that keeps it just real chunky but it's still, you know, so it drains quickly, but it retains moisture because you should never let the soil completely dry out on this plant. You want to water it when like the first half of the soil starts becoming dry, you should water it again. But it's really susceptible to root rot, so you never want to overwater it either. So although I, like, I consider it a, a beginner plant, but this is something that I think a lot of people have difficulty with is finding the right medium between too much water and too little water. If the leaves start turning yellow, then it means that you're probably overwatering the plant. If the leaves start turning brown and crispy, then it might be suffering from drought stress and you need to give it a water. As for other care tips, you can notch and prune your fiddle leaf fig in order to create bushier growth. 
it's quite a stylish tree right now and a lot of people really prefer that sort of bushy look rather than like a long thin tree um, and they achieve that through notching and pruning. If you would like to see a really good video about notching and pruning, you can check out Exotic Tropical House Plants video, which I think is an excellent guide for notching and pruning fiddly figs. Since its leaves are really big and broad and kind of cup-shaped, they tend to gather a lot of dust, which can inhibit the photosynthesis process. So like once every two or three weeks, I'll take a dry microfiber cloth, something really soft, and just dust the leaves off. You could also use a soft, damp sponge or something like that. Anything that's just really soft and won't scratch the leaves. And one more thing, if you would like to know about propagating this plant, Harley G just made a video very recently about propagating ficus plants and uh, ficus lorata is definitely included in that. So you can check out her video and she'll show you how to propagate these plants from cuttings. And that covers everything when it comes to ficus lorata or fiddle leaf fig. They prefer bright indirect light, but they can survive in lower light levels. They like high humidity, warm temperatures between 65 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit preferably, and they need a quick kind of chunky and quick draining soil that retains some moisture and you never want to let it go completely dry. That's my guide for ficus lorata or fiddle leaf fig. It's such a beautiful plant. I really love mine and I admire it all the time. I keep it right next to my workspace where I spend most of my day so that I can admire it. If you have any comments or questions or if you want to suggest videos for the future, this was a suggested video, just leave it down below in the comments. I'll get back to you. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see other care guides or videos about houseplant love and care, check out my channel, subscribe, nah, you feel free to subscribe. And I just want to thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day and I will see you soon.